just thought I'd do a little video. Um, lots of wildlife down here, and I know some of you like wildlife. So there's no swans, but there's pelicans over in that little island over there, and lots of ducks and other birds and the squawkers, the cockatiels, and seagulls. So it seems like the cockatiels have got the upper hand tonight again. Anyway. So I'll just put this aside for the next video and hope you like it. See you for now. something here to create a swarm habitat. It's a few short lot.
swannies are coming this way. very disappointed at the moment because I thought I was videoing this the making of this trifle so you got strawberries and sponge with jam on top and ginger ale poured over the top and mashed into the sponge with custard and cream so I actually went through step by step on how to do it and it was 11 minutes long and I don't know where it's gone, it's just disappeared into the ether. So you can't see how to make a trifle, or well, how I make this trifle. This is my mother-in-law's trifle, and she taught me to make it in the 70s. So all you need, as I said, is a punnet of strawberries, a sponge, like you know, the sandwich sponge, or the round one, one layer, just for a punnet of strawberries, two layers for two punnets of strawberries dry ginger ale and pour over the top mash it in with a, a masher if you've got one just to let the juice soak through so there's a bit of in the bottom i don't know whether you can oh, you can't really see it now and then get your, your custard that's your custard dollop custard and dollop cream and just spoon your custard on top of the, the sponge and until you think that it's enough for you Poke a knife down the edge so the custard runs down into the thing, into the sponge, and then pile your dollop cream on top. I use one and a half of these. Um, that's how you make, how I make a trifle. And because most of the people that like my trifle live in New Zealand, I get to eat this all by myself. So, thanks, bye. Here we go, round two. This time it's a bacon and egg pie slash quiche. I think there's going to be more egg in it than bacon because I didn't get enough bacon out of the freezer. But anyway, I've prepared most of this, so it's going to be a lot easier for me to show you. We've got the peas that I always put in my pie, frozen, some onion, some tomato, and some bacon, and this is uh, 10 eggs which I've just got to beat. So I'll just start beating them now. And my nose is running because of the blooming onion. So you won't get to see all this because it's going to be too noisy. But... That's all that needs to be done. And what I do usually is I... Oh, I've get the marge out. I grease the, the baking dish with the margarine. Stop the pastry sticker. Then I get the pastry, peel that off, plonk it down in there. Everybody makes their bacon and egg pies different. 
So this is just the way I do mine. Right, then I'll pour the egg in. Oh, it might be a bit back to front, but anyway, I'll pour the egg in. And then I'll put the bacon, bits of bacon in it. Hundred and eighty Fahrenheit. Sprinkle the onion around on it. It's probably more like a very large quiche, but I'll put a top on it. Throw the peas in. Takes about an hour to cook. that I make all the time so I'm just so used to throwing it all together. Normally I actually put it all in the bowl and then just pour it into the pastry bit. I leave a little bit of egg in the bottom of that to put over the top of the pastry. Pour this one on top. Salt and pepper. Gotta have salt and pepper, gosh. Or any other herby spicy thing you want to put in there. supposed to go where I just put whatever I feel like in at the time. Oh, there we go. It was a bit hard to get that on because it was pretty soggy from the egg. Right, so we prick. Then we get the rest of the egg bits that are in here. Just wipe it around. It just so when it's cooking, when it's cooked, it turns brown. Now it's going in the oven, and you'll see it at the back end of this. Bye. This is the end result of my bacon and egg pie.
beautiful day. It's a pity I'm not on the other side over there where I can get photos of this side because the reflections were perfect. any food Hi everyone, I just thought I'd um, pop on and as my ending to the video, I will read you this week's poem. Um, I decided that I would do this one because a lot of my stories lately have been about birds. Not that I can help that because they spend a lot of time out there making a lot of noise. Um, but I thought this one was quite appropriate. I wrote it in 2013. I had some parrots in a tree out the back of my house um, and they used to just sit there and squawk away at each other. So this is the story, the poem. I'll have to wear my glasses to read this. It's called The Love Story of Two Parrots. The noise is so loud, they all speak at once, each a different voice, all vying for attention, twittering and tweeting, outdoing the screeching. A little sound pops up, it's a squeaky bird a flirting. He's sitting there preening himself to entice his mate to join him. Then he flies off over the rooftops, leaving his mate a calling. She sits there looking forlorn, head bowed to the ground. A soft squeaking noise, just loud enough to hear. Calling gently to her mate, she hopes he flies back there. Then she hears a quiet twitter coming from another direction. She snuggles into the tree where she starts a preening. She plays a game of hide and seek up amongst the branches. Her new friend creeps around the tree and stands there before her. One tweet is all it takes and they fly off together. Her old mate returns tweeting out loud. High up in the tree he looks around. She flies back and knowing her place. Softly they talk to each other's face. They are together forever. You hear it in their sounds, watching and listening, it makes your heart glow. So I wrote that, yeah, sitting outside just watching these birds in the tree and just observed their whole demeanour for a good half hour and the words came to me, so that's the story. Um, sorry about the bit of a mixy bit about the cooking. I did actually record all that and as I said earlier, I don't know where it went. Um, so I had to just tell you what I did roughly at the beginning of it. So I hope you don't mind the cooking segment, it was just something off the cuff. I won't do it too often, don't worry. Oh yeah, the hair colour. I just decided to experiment. So, little wash out. Eight washes and we'll be gone. Just thought it needed a bit of fun, something fun to do. Anyway, uh, next week will be a couple of different things, hopefully. So, we'll catch you next time. See ya, bye.